In the previous video, we talked about the alpha and beta variants of monosaccharides. In this video, we will talk about how the alpha and beta carbohydrate monosaccharides contribute in the formation of disaccharides and polysaccharides. Disaccharides are formed by linking two monosaccharides by glycosidic bond. So, what is a glycosidic bond? Glycosidic bond is a bond between one carbohydrate molecule and some other group. That other group can be another carbohydrate or it can be any other group other than carbohydrate. The glycosidic bond involves the anomeric carbon and the hydroxyl group of the other molecule. In the previous video, we talked about three main monosaccharides. Those are glucose, fructose and galactose. And by this glycosidic bond, these monosaccharides can bind with each other and form disaccharides. Such as sucrose is made up of two monosaccharides. One is glucose molecule, another is a fructose molecule. But the glucose molecule involved in sucrose is alpha-glucose and the fructose is beta fructose. This is one alpha glucose, that's why the OH group in the first carbon is in transposition with the CH2OH of the sixth carbon. And as this is a beta fructose, so the anomeric carbon will have the OH group in the cis position with the CH2OH of the sixth carbon. And the glycosidic bond will form between the anomeric carbons of alpha glucose and beta fructose in the case of sucrose. And one molecule of water will be released. Now, in case of maltose, it is also one disaccharide. Maltose is made up of two monosaccharides. But in this case, both the monosaccharides are alpha glucose. So maltose is a disaccharide of alpha-glucose. Two alpha-glucose linked together by glycosidic bond forms one maltose. So this is one alpha-glucose and this is another alpha-glucose. But in this case, the glycosidic bond will be between the first carbon of one glucose and fourth carbon of another glucose. As the bond is in between the alpha 1 and the fourth carbon of the another glucose, so the bond will be alpha 1 4. In case of sucrose, as both the anomeric carbons are involved, so alpha and beta both are mentioned. Now coming to lactose, it is another disaccharide which is made up of galactose and glucose. The galactose molecule will be beta-galactose and the glucose molecule will be alpha-glucose. It is beta-galactose, so the OH group of the anomeric carbon is in the cis position with the CH2OH of the sixth carbon, that is they are in the same plane. And this is the alpha-glucose as we have drawn before also. So the glycosidic bond will be between the anomeric carbon of beta-galactose and the fourth carbon of alpha-glucose. So the bond is beta-1,4 glycosidic bond. Sucrose, maltose and lactose, all of these disaccharides are part of our food. So there are some enzymes to break it down in the gastrointestinal tract. The glycosidic bond of sucrose is broken down by sucrase isomaltase. In case of maltose, it is done by maltase enzyme. And in lactose, it is done by the lactase enzyme. Now let us talk about the polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are made up of many monosaccharides linked by the glycosidic bond. The three main polysaccharides found in our food are Cellulose, starch and glycogen. Cellulose is a homopolysaccharide of beta-D-glucose. Starch is made up of alpha-D-glucose. And glycogen is also a polysaccharide of alpha-D-glucose. 
So in case of cellulose, I am drawing a beta D glucose and the polymer is made up of many beta D glucose monomers or monosaccharides. So this is one beta D glucose and this is another beta D glucose. So the glycosidic bond will be between the anomeric carbon of one beta glucose and with the fourth carbon of another beta glucose and it will continue in the whole polymer or polysaccharide and this bond is named as beta 1 4 glycosidic bond and the only enzyme that can break this bond is cellulase and in us human we do not have the cellulase enzyme so we cannot break down cellulose next is the starch it is also made by the plants. It is a polysaccharide of alpha D glucose. So all the monomeric units are alpha D glucose. And the bond is between alpha 1 that is the anomeric carbon and the fourth carbon of the next alpha glucose. In case of starch it has two types of forms. One is linear form which is also called amylose. This molecule, the polysaccharide is amylose and another in starch is the branched form and that is called amylopectin. In case of amylopectin, the polysaccharide will have alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond between two alpha glucose and it will also have bond between the sixth carbon and the anomeric carbon of another alpha glucose making it a branched structure like this and this glycosidic bond is called alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond between the 6 carbon and the alpha 1 this branched structure will have two types of glycosidic bond one is alpha 1 4 and another is alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond and this branch structure of starch is also called the amylopectin. It is broken by the amylase and maltase enzymes. Now coming to the glycogen. It is also a polysaccharide of alpha D glucose. That means many alpha D glucose are linked by glycosidic bonds to make this glycogen. Glycogen has no linear structure, it only has the brown structure like the amylopectin of starch. But the branching is much more present in the glycogen than the starch amylopectin. So this is a more brown structure, it has more branching that is alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond. This is highly branched. And this bond can also be broken by amylase and maltase enzymes.